Hello everyone, and welcome to this Video Sans Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield. Now, as some of you know, I'm part of a Facebook group called Autism in Scotland. And, well, I mean, I've got it zoomed in, so you can actually see the um, logo, but not necessarily anything else to protect the members, as this is a closed group. However, I... I have a story that involves the admin of this group. One day, back in July, I got uh, notified of a group conversation involving the admin of Autism in Scotland and one of her friends. Now... This conversation was talking about how this person had a spare laptop and a couple of other bits lying about, including a great big pile of floppy disks, and that it, well, basically the machine needed a new home. So the head of autism in Scotland uh, was talking about... Um, that maybe I could maybe give this machine a new home. So, the person whose machine it was agreed to send it to me. And she did, along with some floppy disks and a really very tiny DSL modem. But the laptop didn't just come alone. It came with a great big pile of restore disks, some of which aren't even for the laptop. But some, of course, are. So let's have a look at this machine. Here it is. What you are looking at here is an HP Compaq NX9105. Now, HP's lineup is quite confusing, or it was. Because not only did they actually own Compaq, as in the brand, they actually not only made Compaq branded stuff, HP Compaq branded stuff. The difference being was that Compaq was home use, whereas HP Compaq was business use. Like, for example, these machines here. The HP Compaq D530U. So, here is the HP Compaq NX9105. Let's, let's take a wee tour. On the left-hand side, You've got a Kensington lock slot, multi-card reader, which supports SD, MMC, SM, which is smart media, and my memory stick and memory stick pro. There are two USB ports and a DVD-ROM CDRW combi drive. Very nice. On the front here we see a JBL Pro badge, which advertises JBL Pro speakers, which are quite good. I've uh, started this machine up before, I've had it for uh, about a month now. Then there is the, button, the uh, lead release, you press that and open it up. The wireless toggle switch. Then you have volume up, up, down and mute buttons. <coughs> Headphone and microphone sockets. Another USB port. Mini firewire port. m red which is actually quite a nice addition. A proprietary port, which must be for the adding of drives. Ethernet. what looks like a an S-Video port and then on the back you have power supply a vent VGA out parallel and a modem now 
Now, one thing that does seem quite odd to me is that this machine does not seem to have a PS2 mouse keyboard port or a serial port. That's quite odd. But never mind. So, what am I going to do with this machine? Well, as some of you are aware, I have been looking at um, different restore, restore procedures for factory resetting a computer back to its defaults. We've looked at um, <clears throat> the most simplest of restores, the uh, Packard Bell Legend 402 CDs restore, which is basically just a glorified X copy command, which copies the contents of a CD to the hard drive and runs a sys command so, so as to make the drive bootable. We've looked at the <coughs> sys prep approach to things, the Packard Bell iMedia, which took forever. It um, is an automatic uh, batch process that will install Windows and then install each individual program. Like I said, that takes years. We've also looked at the completely altogether approach, the image, well, the image restore um, from things like um, the Compact Presario CQ61 laptop. And we've looked at uh, the Packard Bell iMedia 3050's restore process as well. So today, I'm going to show you a different type of restore process. This is one where it's, it's kind of a hybrid. Because while I have to manually install Windows, all that is up to me, the driver disk does offer a batch install process, a lot like um, some motherboards do nowadays. Some motherboard driver CDs also offer that sort of a thing. However, not only does this batch install all the programs, all the drivers that you need, it also adds Hewlett Packard branding. For example, the HP desktop background. Not only does it add it for you, the user, but it also adds it for the default profile, as in the profile that's active at the logon screen. It also adds a <clears throat> it also adds the OEM logo and OEM info files to the system32 folder. So without further ado, let me plug in and we'll get started. So before we do anything, we're gonna have a look at some of the um well the CDs that um I'm going to be using. First of all, we're going to need the Operating System CD, Windows XP Professional Service Pack 1A. Then we're going to have a then we're going to be needing the Driver Recovery CD, which is a double disk set. Then we're going to need to use this Microsoft Windows Critical Security Updates. Although actually, I'm not sure if we will or not, because I'm just merely going to be installing service packs one and two, uh, two and three, and then there's the HP documentation library. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's try and do this one-handed. Let's press the, uh, there we go. So here's the laptop inside. It's um, an AMD Athlon XP. The first Athlon XP machine I've owned since my 2004 custom built, which was um, a huge resounding sucks. That, no, wait, that's not right, is it? No, what I mean to say is a 2004 custom built was, it was an apocalyptic failure. Sorry, but it was. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Let's power this on. And uh, see if there's any... Okay, so I've ended up at the BIOS screen. Nice. So, 
here's the operating system CD. I'm going to drop that in. I love how there's accessibility options and all you have is a delay. And that's good, that's better than nothing, I suppose. So I'm going to have a look at the boot order. And yes, the CD ROM drive is there. I guess that part on the right is to attach a floppy drive. Kind of looks like, um, kind of looks like the part I have on a, for a Dell Latitude, the uh, CSX. And I now have a cable. So, press any key to boot from CD, it says. So, once we've established where the any key is, or the fact that um, when it says press any key, it actually refers to any key on the keyboard. According to the Microsoft Cyber Setcom, um, according to Matthew Perry, you could literally, f well, or is it Jennifer Aniston? According to one of those two, you could literally fall on the keyboard and it'd do something. Yeah, but don't. Apparently. <clears throat> now, I'm doing this video. I have restored quite a few machines on this channel recently. But I, I'm doing this video because, well, A, it's what I like to do see on YouTube. Not that I go around watching my own videos, because quite frankly, I don't. And I will every once in a while, but, you know, I really don't watch my own videos. Um, but I mean, apart from that, you know, I, I enjoy, I enjoy look, uh, watching computer restore videos on YouTube. And plus, you know, I was chatting to Billy and and Billy Carr, Road Geek, and he says he likes to see my restore videos as well. So you know, if people like to see them, then I'll do them. Sorry about that. That's um, the sunlight reflecting off of a window and onto the screen. Great. Okay. So um, this is regular Windows XP setup. So to set up Windows XP now, press Enter. Now. We're going to be not doing this from a clean hard drive. This has already got Windows installed. So what I'm going to do is to continue installing a fresh copy of XP, uh, press Escape. What I'm going to do, delete that partition. Click where it says um, press Enter in the unpartitioned space and format using the NTFS file system quick. And here we find the size of the hard disk it is to partition. It's a 40 gigabyte disk. Now, <clears throat> let me tell you a bit about this machine while we're waiting. It does have an AMD Athlon XP. I think it's a 1.6, 1.7 gigahertz. I've not had much time with this machine. Um, but it does have NVIDIA graphics, which is very nice. It originally came with 256 megs of RAM, however, before this video, I have upgraded it. It now runs with 512 megs of memory. Which actually means that this machine, just like the Penumbra PC that I showed you last week, is a very usable machine. Even now, the battery on it is pretty much dead. But I'm pretty sure, you know, if you looked on eBay, you could get refurbished ones or what have you. So, I mean, these machines are still very usable. And yes, while well, the screen was, you know, quite, had quite a lot of marks on it, and the lead still does, I cleaned up the screen the other day, and, well, not only that, but, um, I mean, the inside of the machine looks pretty much immaculate, and the LEDs are extremely bright. They're brighter than a machine of this age should be. Which leads me to believe that maybe this laptop wasn't used an awful lot. Keyboard is kind of just standard form, but the keys still feel kind of new. 
and there's not really that much wear on them. So I mean, I, I really can't tell by this light what wear there is, but I mean, the space bar really doesn't have that much shine on it. There's a couple of scuff marks, yes. You know, there is a couple of scuff marks, but I mean, really, the machine just kind of looks brand new from the inside. This design was used later on, though. They started using this particular design, except uh, the screen was slightly different because it was a widescreen, but they used this particular design for their compact branded late Windows XP, early Windows Vista era laptops. However, by that time, I think they may have cheapened out on a few things. Because it really didn't. It really didn't fare up so well. I had to fix someone's laptop. And the rubber... The uh, rubber... Uh, I don't know what you'd call these, but the... You know, these, these uh, rubberized mouse buttons actually were peeling off. It's like you'd click the mouse and then suddenly next thing you know it would come off. I do like, uh, I mean, HP and Compact still do this, even now. You've got the icons telling you which parts are which on the inside of the case. So it's actually quite easy to kind of find where to plug something in. USB, proprietary connector, no, not USB, S-Video, Ethernet, proprietary connector, USB, Microphone, headphone, and then the buttons, mute, volume down, uh, up, volume down, USB, USB. And then here's the usual important notice that you find on compacts. For comfortable and safe use, read safety and comfort guide, www.hp. Dot com slash ergo and now the text portion the text based portion of XP setup is finished so now we're going to HP invent the graphical portion yay gooey setup great now Windows XP is half installed So now Windows is going to try and detect devices. So while it's doing that, I will uh, stop the video. Thanks to the magic of video editing, in the words of your UXW Bell, I'll be right back. <coughs> okay, so um, here is the regional and language options screen. Now if you live in America, you can probably just click next. But because I live in Great Britain, I need to actually set all these options. This machine does have a British keyboard. So I need to set it up as such. If I change the default to English United Kingdom on the keyboard and then apply the settings, Makes it easy to delete the United States settings, because I don't need that. Now it's saying the standard and format setting is set to English United Kingdom, and the location is set to United Kingdom. Text input languages allow you to enter text in many different languages in a variety of input methods and devices. Your default text input language and method is United Kingdom keyboard layout. 
All right. And because this is an OEM copy of Windows XP, I don't need to enter a product key. This machine has recognized, this installer CD has recognized that I'm installing on the correct laptop and will therefore self-activate. So, So that name is fine. I forgot to type an admin password. That's very important that you remember to do that. So let me do that now. Now to uh, set the time and date. The time and date are both correct. Apart from the date. It's not June the 15th, 2013. Herp derp. It's August the 13th. And I'm in the Greenwich Mean Time Zone. Click Next. Now Windows is installing the uh, networking components. Now if Windows XP recognizes the Ethernet card in this machine what will happen is I will be presented with a wizard dialog box asking well asking me basically to um, set up the network now. It's like in, in the same way that if it had recognised the modem, it would have previously asked for my dialing code, where I'm dialing from. <clears throat> you know, just kind of things like that. It does recognise the network interface card. Now, I just want to use typical settings here, so I'm just going to click Next. I'm going to use the work group. Click Next again. And now Windows is going to start copying files and it's going to finish the installation. However, while that's doing that, I've got something much more important taking place here. The kettle has just recently boiled. Whoops, that, that wasn't supposed to happen. But, oh yeah. Just a wee uh, warning here, if you've made your tea correctly, when you take the tea bag out of the cup, it will be very hot. Now while we're on the subject of that, please don't sue people because you've been scalded by hot beverages. Seriously. You know, if the beverage is in a cup that's got, um, that's actually been secured with a lid or what have you, you know, you know what you're in for when you get a hot beverage. You know? See, I'm, I'm really quite scared that companies get scared of lawsuits and they start making tepid drinks instead of hot drinks. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I love it because if you go somewhere and you get a, a you know a pot of tea or coffee or hot chocolate or whatever in a to go in a to go cup it says warning contents hot and I'm I'm stood there thinking well I kind of hope they are <laughs> I ordered a hot drink I mean if you know if you if you were to offer tepid chocolate on the menu then what are you going to do? Warning, contents may be tepid. <clears throat> What's next? People going to get frozen by ice cream?
Installing start menu items. Oh goody! Next it'll register the components, save the settings, and then remove temporary backup files. And then Windows XP will be ready. In a fashion. Yay, cup of tea. So I'm just going to let this uh, do what it's got to do. And then thanks to the magic of video editing, once again, I will be back. So this is uh, the final part of Windows XP setup. Saving settings. What will happen is the settings will be saved and then removing backup files will happen, which is usually a very quick process. Setup will complete in approximately two minutes. I used to like this wee clock, although quite often it would go, you know, quite fast. Oh, here we go. Removing temporary files used. Removing backup files. What am I on about? Temporary files. And now... The machine will restart. And you can tell this is pre-service pack 2 because the Windows XP version is actually displayed. It used to display display Windows XP Home Edition or Windows XP Professional. Great, now Windows XP is installed. To improve the appearance of your visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust your screen resolution. Well, in a fashion it will. So you know, I do quite often say not to buy Hewlett Packard computers. However, their business spec machines are absolutely fantastic. I mean, take a look at this. This one feels absolutely rock solid. It really does. And now here's a Windows XP out of the box experience. Now, if any of you watch Luke Miller's videos, LML3, um, you know, he's a friend of mine, you'll actually see that this becomes a wizard. I forget his name, I think it's Victor. And uh, he actually talks. Um, on here though, it's just a standard question mark. Checking your internet connectivity, we're just gonna skip this for now. Do I want to register with Microsoft? Nope. Uh, who will use this computer? 
Here you can set up different user accounts but we're just going to use it under, well, I'm just going to be using it, so I'll just say J. It'll say thank you. And now we will be introduced to the Windows desktop. So basically, this part of the machine setup is just like a basic vanilla Windows XP install. So, <clears throat> I mean, that's what, well, a lot of business laptops do do things this way. And there's a good reason for that. Businesses will usually want to set up Windows in their own way that may not be the way that a computer's OEM will want to set it up. So, this is quite a good way for OEMs, for uh, network admins to have their Windows XP installation. However, if you're wanting to take the easy way out, you can use the driver recovery CD, which is actually three disks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull disk one out. Let's just uh, set the other disks down there. drop it into the CD drive and let's load it. Oh and while I'm away doing that I'm just going to reset the mouse pointer. So as you can see you can actually choose to install everything or nothing. So I'm actually going to choose to install everything. There's no Bluetooth adapter in this machine so I'm not going to install that. But have a look at some of the apps. You've got wallpaper, system default settings. This is where this is where all the um, this is where the OEM install is actually configured. Microsoft DirectX 9B for XP and 2K. .NET Framework 1.1 Core Component. Enter Video Win DVD Player. Very useful thing to have. Help and Support Center. Quick Launch Buttons. Sonic Record Now. Sun Java Standard Edition. Which will be hideously out of date. So, um, I'll be able to, I'll need to update that. And it looks like it's an Enforced chipset in here. No, I've always liked Enforced chipsets. Even though that that's what was in the 2004 custom belt, that motherboard was really not that good. However, the 2007 custom belt also had an Enforced chipset, and that was amazing. That awkward moment when I didn't know how to pronounce NVIDIA. I used to say N-V-I-D-I-A or NVIDIA or... Ugh, called everything under the sun. NVIDIA chipset driver. <coughs> Now chances are that HP will have updated drivers on their website and I should probably use them. Mm. However, for the purposes of this restore, I want to show you how it's done from the original CDs, because I have them. I find it interesting how there's drivers for Windows 2000. I mean, that must mean that 
I could probably replace this XP installation with a Windows 2000 installation. And at this time, this at the time this machine was built, a lot of network admins were still using Windows 2000. I mean, my school, for example. I mean, I know schools are a wee bit behind on most things. But in 2004, that was when my school updated their fleet from Windows 98 to Windows 2000 Professional. And I actually really like Windows 2000, it has to be said. Ladies and gentlemen, Elmo3 is my email sound. I like Windows 2000, I think. You know, it's a good, solid operating system, quite simple. However, it is very out of date, and for a lot of things, Windows XP is just better. However, Windows XP is also becoming perilously out of date. And that is a shame. XP is a cult classic. You're not going to get a lot of people... You know, a lot of people still use XP, still cling to it today. Don't want to get rid of it. Don't want to stop using it. A lot of people are now starting to... Oh, AMD F1 processor driver, I remember those. I remember having that on my uh, Advent 7083 with a Turion 64. It was an AMD F1 64 processor driver. I also had it on my 2006 custom belt, because uh, that was built with an AMD Athlon 64 CPU. Yay, 64 bit! <coughs> NVIDIA Video Driver. NV17M. With 32 megs of video memory. So, this has got the makings of being still a really good laptop, really enjoyable to use, I can imagine. Don't worry, the screen is supposed to flash like that when installing display drivers. And as you can hear, the sound is now working. And now the Broadcom 802.11b, 802.11g network adapters driver is being installed. I wonder if I can get a precise date, you know, or, or you, no. I wonder if I can get a roundabout date as to when this machine was manufactured. Installing wallpaper. Installing system default settings. How do you install default settings? You usually set settings. I was like, please excuse me while I install this setting. Installing Microsoft DirectX 9B for XP and 2K. Yes, because I believe XP actually did originally come with DirectX 8.1. Please forgive me if I'm wrong. DirectX 9.0C is now the more up-to-date version, but um, I like how this thinks of everything. I also like how some install and some OEMs will install the latest version of Media Player. Well, the latest for that time, and yet some will just leave it at the default version. .NET Framework core component. 
That I've found has always taken quite a long time to install. Isn't it the hard disk working really hard there? Knowing now that it's uh, .NET work, uh, .NET Framework 4.0 that's uh, the ruling one. I wouldn't mind a copy of Visual Studio 2012 just to see what all the fuss is about. Now installing Enter Video Win DVD Player. Installing Help and Support Center. Quick launch buttons. Not the quick launch buttons that you might be thinking of uh, in the sense of Windows Active Desktop, but um, the quick launch buttons are apparently on this machine. Well, I suppose there is the wireless button and the mute volume up and down buttons. I'm now installing Sonic Record Now. I remember getting that with my very first DVD burner. Didn't necessarily care for it much. But however, you know, if I do need to record CDs with this computer, it's easily done using either that or a copy of Image Burner or anything else that I might like to use. Marvel at how all the lights on this machine are orange. <clears throat> Installing very outdated Java version. Sun, Sun Java. That's something you don't see now, it's all owned by Oracle. See, well, I've got a question for the Oracle. Why you do this? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 
And now, time to restart the computer. And we get to see the brief glimpse of the new OEM wallpaper. So the first thing you actually see is the Hewlett Packard wallpaper. Bad girl snowflake. Excellent. So we have a fully installed, not fully configured obviously, we have a fully installed version of XP and it's dying for us to go on a tour. Who remembers this? I used to love the music from this tour. Welcome to Windows XP from Microsoft, the new version of Windows that brings your PC to life. Yay, Experience Windows! Experience the best. Experience Windows XP. Best for business. Windows XP Professional shines as a business operating system. I did use it for business. Done faster, easier, anytime, anywhere. What if it's on a desktop? Personal computing. Thanks to Windows XP, personal computing just got a whole lot easier and more fun. One of the first Windows XP computers. Unlock the world of digital media. Funny that, one of the um, first XP computers I ever saw. Well, apart from the ones on PC World, one of the first ones I actually saw that had been bought was actually on top of the Cairn Gorms. Right. <clears throat> so, <laughs> basically someone had hoisted a computer up a mountain. Nice! <laughs> but let's uh, have a look at some of the programs that are installed. Record Now, got the Windows games. CD DVD recorder. You can make labels. Enter Video Win DVD, Java Web Start, Sound Max. Startup, Internet Explorer, and all these uh, good applications. Let's have a look at the uh, system properties. Obviously, it's uh, it is a um, it's a twenty eight hundred plus. It's a wee bit more than three hundred and ninety eight megahertz. I know that much. It's uh, just AMD's power saving technology. Obviously, if I started doing something a wee bit more intense with this machine, the speed would shoot right up. So inserting disk 2 of that restore set shows me that there are more applications to install. System enhancements, system enhancements for Windows XP. This installs Microsoft files and enhancements for Windows XP that help your notebook run better. Well, let's install that then. Yay, system enhancements. never really says what these are. It always just says, oh, this will make your machine run better. Better than what? Just, just better. Microsoft been listening to Scroobius Pep. Get better. <clears throat> I love it. In one of his songs, he says, thou shalt not make repetitive generic music. And then in his next song, he's like, get better. Get better, get better, get better. Good songs though. Very good songs. Lots of advice. I reckon you could have. Uh, I reckon you could have good fun chatting with with the uh, the guy who calls himself Scroobius Pep.
It was uh, it was basically it was um, it was my best friend down in England who actually introduced me to the music of Scroobius Pip. He he quite often you know where music is concerned, he quite often has um, you know quite you know he quite often introduces me to some of the weird and wonderful music. See, I was listening to Adele before. A lot of people even knew what an Adele was. But now everyone's posting memes of Dell laptops in the sea or Dell laptops on wheels underwater going, Yeah, look at this, Adele rolling in the deep. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop the video while this notebook gets better and uh, then I'll be right back. So the system is ready to restart. Okay, so here we go. I guess it does run a wee bit faster than it did, actually. It certainly is quite quick, but then again, I do have to remember that this is Windows XP Service Pack 1A. An operating system which I would have recommended back in the day as uh, something that you can run on... Uh, Systems running at a speed lower than one gigahertz. Nowadays, I wouldn't probably do that. Hardware enab enabling drivers. A via driver and some software applications. Uh, Windows Diagnostics, Windows Movie Maker 2. Sonic DLA. This product enables access to your optical drive from Windows. Well, I've, I can access the optical drive anyway. But what Sonic DLA does is allows you to use a rewritable CD as you would any writable, rewritable form of removable storage. Or even fixed storage. Basically, it enables you to use a CD as though, well, to kind of use terminology from back then... You can use a CD as though it were a very large floppy disk. Broadcom 802.11b, 802.11g, network adapters, user interface. <clears throat> Remember when I was talking about um, OEMs bundling the latest version of Windows Media Player? Well, it looks like you can install it from this disk. Okay, so I've run all three, sys all three driver desks. Now, like I said, I could run this critical system software up uh, security updates desk, but I'm not going to. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am that. No, I'm only kidding on. But um, the reason I'm not going to is because all of these updates, if they weren't included in Service Pack 2, which um, I don't see how likely that would be, then they will have definitely been included in Service Pack 3. And that seems like a better spend of time to install those service packs rather than install those critical security updates, which basically, which basically will be overwritten. <clears throat> the reason I need to install Service Pack 2 and then Service Pack 3 is because Service Pack 3 is not a self-contained service pack. Whereas with older versions of Windows and their service packs, you could install Service Pack 6 to Windows NT4. 
and actually find and actually find that all the content from the other service packs is installed. This is not the case with Windows XP, Windows Vista or Windows 7 service packs. Although we're only onto service pack for, one for XP. So, here we have hardware and software guides. Thing is though, I'm not sure if these actually install. Nor am I sure if these actually even work. Because I don't have Adobe Reader installed on here. Espanol. Hey, check this out. It's Espanol! Actually, it's pronounced Espanol. But yeah. This is quite funny how these guides, the, I think they need Adobe Reader to work, and yet it's not actually enabled on this machine. Loving the icon though. It's a laptop. Acrobat Reader is on this CD. However, you wouldn't know that without actually going into the desk. Well, let's install it. Yay, Acrobat Reader! Who remembers this? This runs really quite fast on here, but trust me, on my 2001 custom belt, it didn't. Seems that Adobe Acrobat Reader 6 and Acrobat Reader 8 weren't really that good at being optimised for speed. I'm just trying to think when it started be well, being called Adobe Reader. Oh, by the time it was version 6.0, it looks like. Seems that version 6 and 8, like I said, 6 and 8, seem to be quite slow, whereas 7 and 9 seem to be really quite quick. So here we are. Here is a fully loaded HP. Everything is installed. Sonic DLA, although it's HP DLA. Java Web Start, Internet Explorer, Windows Media Player 9 and Movie Maker 2. I like this. Configuration record. HP invent. This is really very meaningful. Let's have a look at HP Diagnostics. Diagnostics should be used with no other programs running. 
Oh look, this looks a lot like compact diagnostics. It's HP Compact NX9015. Um, AMD Athlon XP processor at 1.6 GHz. 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, hard disk drive. CD... FDC... Uh, what? PDCD, DVD, CDRW drive. Windows version XP, SP1. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm installing uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2. Um, it's kind of uh, halfway through the installation now. Um, I had to stop so that I could actually uh, copy all of the videos from my phone to my computer. Um, I had to copy everything from my phone to my computer because I kind of ran out of space. But here is uh, Service Pack 2 now. It's, um, it's away installing. Okay, so that's Service Pack 2 installed. So now... So uh, just take a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, um, the battery I think is completely dead. Um, looking in Windows, it's not actually uh, showing um, a charge or a percentage of a charge. And if I just if I was to unplug the laptop now, it would literally die. I mean, for example. Hang on a minute. So I'm just going to have to... There we go. So, as you'll find out, Service Pack 2 is now installed. Windows XP no longer displays a, um, what version it is. And if this was Windows XP Home Edition, where the bar is normally green, it will too remain. It will too be blue. So. When Windows XP Service Pack 2 installs, you have another out-of-the-box experience wizard. There we go. So, help protect your PC. Do you want to turn on automatic updates? I would always say that um, you probably do. Updates help keep your computer secure. And now... So now, Windows XP Service Pack 2 has completely been set up, however, because I don't have any antivirus software installed as of yet, I will end up with uh, quite an annoying weather, well, quite an annoying screen from the Windows Safety Center, or whatever it was called, I can't mind what its name is, in Windows XP. 
Windows Security Center. Oh, those were the days. So there we go, Windows XP Service Pack 2 is now installed. However, before I finish, I'm going to install Service Pack 3 and the newest version of Internet Explorer which is supported on XP, which of course is IE8. <laughs> right. And now because we've got XP Service Pack 2, we have um, the regular Windows XP Zero configuration utility, which I actually do quite like. I mean, while wireless worked on Windows XP, you know, RTM and Service Pack 1, it wasn't really the best in the world, I don't think anyway. Well, I'm at it. I think I'm going to enable the quick launch toolbar. There we go. So now Service Pack 3 is installing. So, like I say, well, like I've said before, I'll let this install and I'll be right back. Okay. So that's Service Pack 3 now installed. Unfortunately, this can somewhat slow XP down. It's a bit of a shame, really. Because, I mean, the first round of computers designed for Windows excuse me the first round of computers that were actually designed for Windows XP nowadays can't really run it at least not with a shed load of upgrades or you know what have you and that is a real shame really because I mean these machines are still useful and with the right software on could still be quite quick it's just a shame that you know, with all the security updates needed, it's just a real shame that, you know, Microsoft software seems to bloat exponentially. And it kind of just seems, you know, to me that, you know, with all the updates needed, you know, for one operating system, it seems to need as much as the next operating system to run. I mean, for example, take Windows 95. Originally, the minimum system requirements were for a you know, system with, you know, 386 with 4 megs of RAM. To run Internet Explorer 5, which is the latest version of Internet Explorer for Windows 95, it needs at least 16 megs of RAM to run. And I wouldn't run Internet Explorer 5 on just 16 megs of RAM. You know, I, I would say that's ill advised to do such a thing. And of course, we all know how Internet Explorer ties in with the rest of the operating system, even without the Active Desktop Update. However, the Active, you know, if you don't have the Active Desktop Update installed, you know, you will save a lot of memory that way. But with Service Pack 3, when you first install it, you will see this screen. But you'll only see it once, like I said in the Penumbra PC video. And Service Pack 3 does not have any settings that you need to set. It literally just installs itself and is ready for use. So all I need to do is to log myself in. However, we're not out of the woods yet with all the updates. There's still quite a lot to do. 
you know for example Internet Explorer 8 needs installed and then there is quite a lot of updates to install. Now when installing updates for Windows XP I like to skip a couple of updates Windows Desktop Search and Bing Desktop. I feel that those updates only add bloat to the system and really don't offer any real improvements to the way that XP works. I mean sure the search function in Windows Vista and Windows 7 is fantastic but that's because you know those operating systems are really optimized for such features to be implemented. XP well I would say not. So first of all I'm going to install Internet Explorer 8 Obviously, I will need to install updates. If I install it offline, I will need to install updates um, manually. But I do like how with Internet Explorer, you can install it while offline. You know, unlike Internet Explorer 7, which needed um, to be... Ver which needed your Windows installation verified before it would update, Microsoft did at least not require verification for for important updates of which Internet Explorer is an important update. To be honest, Internet Explorer, well, just in general, Internet Explorer 7 was just a total disaster of a browser. It was slow, the interface, a lot of people didn't like, even though it included tabs, it was just a terrible browser. So a lot of people did hang on to Internet Explorer 6 for as long as they possibly could. And I really don't blame them for doing such a thing. However, Internet Explorer 8 came along, around about the time Windows 7 came out. However, Google had been hacked thanks to Internet Explorer, well something to do with Internet Explorer 6, the German government had actually advised people not to use IE6 and into, instead to use something like Mozilla Firefox. A government suggesting that. Now, <laughs> props to the German government, you know. I mean, a lot of people do still like Internet Explorer as, a, as the browser of choice that comes with Windows. Um, personally, though, I would go sooner go for something like Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. And personally, I my personal favourite is Mozilla Firefox. I did use Google Chrome for quite a bit last year, but, you know, I mean, I always go back to a trusty favourite. You know, it's... Um, I do prefer Firefox, um, you know, and I've used it since 2005. So that's Internet Exploder 8 installed, and now, let's get on with connecting this machine to a network. No network! Oh no! Sorry to quote Luke. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. And now, let's find me some network. Okay, so according to this icon, I'm online. So... Let's go and do some stuff. First off, I actually want to go online, go onto the network and download some antivirus software. So please bear with me while I do all this. So before I do anything, I've uh, decided to map all the network drives and uh, go and install my printer as a shared device. So this does take a while, certainly over wireless. But because in Windows 7 on my main machine, 
I've actually been able to uh, install device drivers. Um, please excuse me. What am I trying to say? You know, I've been able to install you know proper device drivers from a printer um, in Windows 8. Windows 7, sorry. Um, not only do I have x64 drivers, but I also have x86 drivers, uh, which are actually the Windows XP drivers. See, I remember there was a time when you could actually set up drivers for different versions of Windows. Obviously now, those days are over. And you're literally just left with them. Um, I really don't know anymore. <laughs> you're literally just left with them. Um, the. Uh, you know, basically Windows XP support. Windows 2000 actually connects to Windows 7 machines actually really quite well as well, which, you know, that I am surprised about. And it even installs and uses the printer drivers. Obviously, uh, some of the more advanced features don't work, but um, the drivers themselves do. And XP drivers, certainly for the Epson Stellis DX uh, 4000 and 6000 range of print. Yeah, I've got mail. Uh, certainly the Epson Stellis DX 4000 and DX 6000 series of printers, actually, the XP drivers do work in Windows Vista. And whatever works in Windows Vista, by and large, works in Windows 7. Alright, so now let's get some stuff installed. Look at this. This means business. Aw, yeah! So, I was able to use a product number, plus some help from Hewlett Packard's website, to find out the... Uh, you know, have the uh, rough time frame when this machine was built. I was able to find out that it was built in the 44th week of 2004, which would make it any time from, well, basically, uh, depending on whether you uh, to you know, what, what day you take to be the, um, you know, first kind of day of the week. And if you're going by the, um, the Christian week, uh, then uh, the first day of the week would be Monday, as the uh, seventh day, Sunday is the Sabbath, and uh, as a day of rest. So, if we're going to use Monday to be the first day of the week, then that would mean that the machine was built any time uh, from the... Well, let me think about this. That's the uh, 31st of October... Uh, through to the 6th, well, no, the 1st of November, sorry, through to the 7th. So, yeah, I can vaguely kind of remember what I was doing then. Um, I remember that was the week that The Simpsons started broadcasting on Channel 4. And um, there would be a quote-unquote new episode of The Simpsons uh, every Friday, I remember that. And, and then they would start showing classic ones every other day of the week. I remember that, because uh, I got to see some, because the next week I got to see some classic season one episodes. Unfortunately, um, academic year 2004-2005, for me, that was really not a good year for me. However, back to this laptop. Apparently the reason why I wanted to know that was so that I would know kind of what, you know, what appropriate software uh, to put on it. Being a business laptop, it'll need an office suite, so I've chosen Office 2003. However, being my laptop, it'll need a copy of WorkSuite. So what better version of WorkSuite to put on than WorkSuite 2005? Bought by me for about £7 at Thainston Market. Which is uh, basically um, a car boot sale. Or, if you're from America, a flea market, where one might buy fleas.
or if you're rummaging around in kind of old stuff owned by people, been sat in you know someone some randomer's house for years, um, that could be a flea market, as in you'll get fleas. Um, depending, you know, doesn't matter what country you're in. I'm, I'm not trying to say that Americans will get fleas and we don't. That, that would be unfair to say. You know, especially as I do have lots of good friends who are, in fact, American. You know, it's, it's quite good, you know, it's... You know, some of my closest... Would you be quiet, please? Some of my closest friends, naturally, if, if it was too quiet, I'd be like, the sound me working in a D can fit to D. Some of my closest friends, I've never actually met. I've just Skyped with them and, you know, chatted to them, you know, online and what have you. You know, it's, and, it, and it's all thanks to, you know, Billy Corr and the old Packard Bell Club, you know, that I've met quite a few really decent people. You know, I mean, I, I personally know people like, Elmo 3 and Matthew H12 and, and yes, Billy Core. I remember the first time I ever spoke to him on Skype. Wow. That was, that was just, I was just completely starstruck. Seriously, it was like, wow, I can't believe I'm speaking to this guy. So that's me installing Office 2003. I'll install this and then I'll install Work Suite 2005. But for now... I'm watching Tezza, aka Terry Stewart from New Zealand, do a video on a compact. So, if you like, excuse me, gonna watch this. Be right back. So, uh, I'm listening to Billy Core's classics here on Rock and Waves. And, um. Sorry, Billy, I'm gonna have to turn it down a wee minute. Um. Now, when you uh, update Windows XP, as validation was never something that was originally built into XP and was applied by way of update, um, you do get this interesting screen, you know, when, you know, not long after you first install XP, you know, and uh, soon after you install the updates. Basically, it's kind of like a wee wizard that you've got to go through to actually install the uh, WGA updates. Not a problem, Billy. So basically what will happen... Sorry about that. So basically what's going to happen now is um, the activation, well, the uh, validation uh, update, uh, the WGA update will uh, install, and after it's done that, it will actually fire off to actually see if my version of Windows is genuine. Well, I installed it off of an HP uh, Windows XP Professional CD. Um, you know, it's an OEM install, and I am using the correct OEM container, for said license, as in this HP Compact NX uh, 9105. So uh, hopefully it will tell me that um, I am actually running genuine. Oh, just to let you know that uh, today is actually now the 14th of August. Um, I, uh, you know, I had a busy day yesterday and um, I've completely forgotten about uh, what I was up to. Um, so, you know, that was kind of a, a nice wee surprise because I'd forgotten about it. 
my phone had been chiming. Uh, there was a so yeah. Um, so the time is currently uh, three o'clock in the morning. And I started this uh, yesterday at about six in the morning. I was um, I was kind of hoping to leave the video uploading yesterday, but uh, that didn't really happen, did it? What's a dirty? Oh well. White sweet is still to install. So I'm just going to let the activation stuff install. And I always, I always used to thought that I always used to think that said this has been a Chris Rogers Rock and Wave, uh, Chris Rogers Computer Club production. <laughs> Thank you for validating your copy of Windows. Very genuine. And now, there we go. Genuine value. With genuine windows, you get protection, reliability, and performance. And now to continue installing the rest of my applications, I'll be right back. Right, so I have Office 2003 installed. I installed a couple of other things. Paint Shop Pro, so I could take some screenshots of this machine. Um, I also installed Gadwin's uh, print screen um, and performance test, well, Passmark performance test 8.0. And um, I did a benchmark on it and it's got a score of 63. Um, not that good a score, f well, for today, but it's certainly good enough. I mean, benchmark scores really only tell. A tiny amount of the picture. All it really is, is, um, you know, kind of the performance against other machines, and it it really doesn't take much into account. You know, I, I wouldn't, you know, if I was looking at buying a machine, I wouldn't go buy that alone. Because, I mean, you've, you've got to consider, you know, what the machine would be used for. You know, what would demonstrate, you know, good value for you. Anyway, now it's time to install WorkSuite 2005. Now, unfortunately, this is the CD version, not the DVD version. So, there'll be a lot of disk swapping. Express full. This option installs all WaxWeek component uh, programs with the complete installation op options and the default installation locations. This option gives you the most convenient, but requires the most disk space. Well, that's fine. And I want to create a desktop shortcut. So basically what will happen now is um, this will install everything that it needs to. And what I like about later versions of WorkSuite is that it will recognise that you have... Not only will it actually install everything, you know, fully. I mean, WorkSuite 2002, I tried using the... Um, I did try using this option, but it didn't install everything fully. I still had to run Encarta from the DVD. And I didn't want that, because that was my mum's DVD. 
Whoops. Um, <laughs> but I mean, uh, <clears throat> you know, I like this because, and, and this is completely legitimate, by the way. Um, I, <laughs> I like this um, because not only does it actually install everything fully, but it will also recognize that I've got what. Uh, Microsoft Word already installed, so it will actually install the addition, the Work Suite add-on for Word. And yes, it does support Microsoft Word 2003. Even though Work Suite, even right up until 2006, Work Suite 2006 only came with Word 2002, Word XP. That really did surprise me quite a bit because you know I would have of you know I really would have thought you know that later versions would have come with Word 2003 because you know Microsoft Work Suite always came with the latest version of Word that was available um and Microsoft Home Essentials before the original version of Microsoft Home Essentials came with Word 97 that was fresh out Home Essentials 98 again Word 97 uh, Microsoft Work Suite 99 came with Word 97. Microsoft Work Suite 2000 came with Word 2000, as did uh, Work Suite 2001. Work Suite 2002 came with Word XP, also known as Word 2002. Thing is, so did every other version of Work Suite. Now, I can understand Work Suite 2003 coming with Word 2002, because Office 2003 was kind of a break of tradition for, micro, for Microsoft because where they would normally release a version of Office and, um, you know, kind of uh, name it the next, you know, the next year, like they did, you know, I mean, okay, where, uh, Office 97 came out on December the 30th, 1996, so, you know, one might argue that was okay. Office 2000 came out you know, in the spring summer of ninety nine, Office XP came out in the summer of night, uh, summer of two thousand and one. Whereas Office two thousand and three came out in the autumn of two thousand and three. Microsoft's regular tradition would have di dictated that that be called Office two thousand and four, but Office two thousand and four was for the Mac. Um. Microsoft Office 2007 came out at the beginning of 2007. Um, Microsoft Office 2010 came out in the summer of 2010. Microsoft Office 2013 came out in February this year. As it is 2013. Um, so, really... You know, I mean, it's uh, Microsoft Office 2003, I guess, started a new tradition from Microsoft. But... You know, I would have kind of expected at least, you know, maybe not Work Suite 2004, but certainly Work Suite 2005 and 2006 to actually come with Word 2003. To be honest, though, I have my own theory as to why it didn't. Now, I can't, I don't know the actual version for Microsoft choosing to, you know, bundle it with an outdated version of Word, but my theory is that. Office 2003 is only compatible with Windows 2000 and XP. And at that time, Microsoft still supported Windows 9X. They still supported it right up until 2006. So my theory is that maybe Microsoft wanted to retain support for Windows 9X with their work suite products. I mean, let's be honest here, a lot of people still used Windows 98 as for as long as they could. A lot of people did not want to upgrade to Windows XP at all. Really. You know, it's, um, it's quite funny. I mean, Microsoft operating system take up, you know, it can be quite slow. I think the quickest take-up of any Microsoft operating system I've seen was Windows 7. You know, as soon as Windows 7 came out, it was it was like, you know, someone had left a stable door open and a horse bolted. Seriously. But, um... 
Yeah, that is my theory about why Work Suite uh, 2005, 2006 come with Word 2002. I mean, I like Word 2002. Um, I remember reading um, Computer Active back in 2003, and they had, um, they had a short story on Office 2003. And they said, well, look, if you have Office 97... And you're happy with it. There really is no need to upgrade to the later version of off later versions of Office. The only reason why I think you might want to do that would be because you know you have uh, Exchange support. Um, you know your organization uses a you know ex a later version of Exchange Server. Um, I liked Office two thousand and three's uh, information bar. You know, you could, um, I mean, even in 2002 you had uh, things like, you know, different translators and what have you. Um, you know, that was quite nice. Plus, if you know, if you were using the Luna theme in Windows XP, the uh, nice bright blue title bar could brighten up your day quite a bit. Anyway, I'm going to get all these uh, programs installed. And as you can see, I'm struggling to do disk swapping with just the one hand. Um, so I'm going to sort all this out, and I will be, once again, right back. I like the theme tune for the Microsoft Money installation. Microsoft were doing that with a few of the programs around about this time. MSN, uh, MSN Explorer 8 had its own uh, music. It sounded a lot like um, Emma Bunton's Take My Breath Away did that, but this one obviously doesn't. Actually it sounds like um, something, actually it sounds like uh, something that you might find in the Sims 3 original soundtrack. Okay, so that is, um, so that's Work Suite 2006 installed. As you can see it uses the uh, Word 2003 icon and there's Encarta, Money, Picture It, and Auto Route installed. Let's go into Word first of all. I've not actually started Office 2003 since I installed this. I like how in um, Work Suite 2003 there's, uh, well, Work Suite 2004 and above there's a calendar. That that's actually a product of uh, Wax 8.0. As you can see, the uh, Wax add-on is installed. This button here that will give you different fonts and uh, different formatting templates. It's um, and to get those, it you kind of um, you use sliders to determine kind of uh, what what font scheme you want. And uh, what colours you want in your template. It's uh, quite a, well, it's quite a unique way of doing things. I'll say that. Seems it works in card to 2000. Oh, yeah, I'll probably get um, uh, given a row about Flash. But I've got, I'm using the latest version of Flash. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Join the Encarta Club now, and you too can be part of something that no longer exists. not bad actually. Although I must admit I do prefer the uh, premium editions of Encarta that come with a dictionary and goodness knows what else. They're absolutely brilliant. You've got things like Auto Root.
Microsoft Money, which uh, usually makes sounds. It's a very nice sound. And then you have Microsoft Picture It. I do believe in one of my previous videos I actually made a comment about how, you know, I felt that Picture It had matured um, since 2002. And indeed it has. And yes, you've still got kind of the friendly flash animation side of it, but it doesn't kind of go all cartoony when it starts up. Um, do you know, I, pre I prefer it. The, the colour scheme looks fantastic. It just looks so organised and uh, the XP style, um, the XP style task pane there, it, it just kind of makes it look, well, it's kind of got that nice, the right balance between <coughs> kind of productivity and, you know, kind of home you know, kind of uh, home software. It's the sort of thing that, you know, I could have seen myself probably actually making use of. Whereas Petra at Photo 2002, it was, I did use it. I did actually use it quite a lot, but it was kind of over the top. And personally, I've, I've never been too keen on the colour orange. But um, it seemed that, uh, you know, in the mid-2000s, starting with, certainly, you know, with the Office 2003, if not, you know, if, if not Windows XP, it certainly seemed to me that Microsoft were kind of wanting to go the whole way of blue and orange. I really don't know why they did that. But, you know, they did and here we are. Anyway, let's uh, do a last couple of things. First of all, why don't we test the DVD playback on this thing? Here I have a DVD about Billy's Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. Look, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. And when DVD was loaded onto this machine earlier on in this video, so all I need to do now is drop the disc in, close the tray, and then what should happen is when DVD should pop up. When DVD for Yeah, that works. Hello, this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Model Wiki. It's um, Friday night, April 26th of 2013. Hard to believe it's almost May, folks. <laughs> but, um, I had this inspiration for a video this morning, and I thought I'd, um, follow through with it for once. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to take a look back at the story of my first Packard Bell was not only my first Packard Bell, but it was also my first computer, period. But before we do that, let's go back to 1995. Second favorite year, next to 94. Um, I remember playing the, um, when we first got it, I didn't put a fancy graphics card in it, because the Intel graphics are all I need. <laughs> Hey, I can make belly go fast.
really realize it at the time how much of an impact that com that Packer Bill had on me because and let's have a look. Ah, yes, this is a main video. In December of 1995, stomach virus stricken six year old Billy Core laid in bed in his home in Greensboro, North Carolina, watching the Flintstones on Cartoon Network. Yay, Flintstones! Town at the newly opened Best Buy. Yay, Best Buy! Something that would change young Billy's life That evening, Yay, Packard Bell Legend, Legend 822. CDT desktop computer. The family's first computer. Billy was able to work up enough strength to occasionally enter the dining room and watch his dad hook the computer up. Goes 95. <laughs> Over the next several years, this Packer Bell would change Billy's life by encouraging him to pursue a career in computers and technology. Billy spent most of his time on the Legend 822 CDT, playing computer games such as Earthworm Jim, Putt Putt, Fatty Bear. Freddy Fish, The Incredible Machine, My First Encyclopedia, among many others. The computer was given away in the spring of 2000 and has never been seen since. In 2005, at the age of 15, Billy began looking for another legend. Hey. 22 CDT. <laughs> the computer itself hasn't been seen since it was given away in 2000 and was thought to never seen ever again until today today in April of 2013 the Packer Bell legend 822 CDT returns this is an amazing film this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki today is <clears throat> that was um that was a very special moment that when he got his eight twenty two back. Wow, just wow, just wow. So now we've done this. So let's um do something a wee bit more taxing. I would expect this machine to be able to play DVDs, and it can. Very well. But uh let's load up Mozilla Firefox and see what we can do here. See what kind of trouble we can uh, wreak havoc on. Nearly said UXW now. Oh, oh no! <laughs> when coffee speaks, I wonder what this is all about. There's a lot of UXW Bell videos I've not actually seen yet. Hi, UXW James here, and I've hijacked my older brother's channel. Many of you know him, follow him, UXW Bill, of course. Oh, this is college. He's not far away. Don't it's worry, UXW. Will be safe. But I'm here to make an announcement um, and to promote my friend's Kickstarter page. My friend traveled to Latin America to research the lives of coffee growers. And she's attempting to write a book. Her book's going to be uh, stories of her adventures and her travels, as well as... It seems that uh, YouTube will work in 360p. Let's, um... Let's have a look at uh, one of UXW Bell's older... ...videos. This is, uh, this is actually my favourite at the Hello moment. There. Everyone, UXW Bill here with yet another vintage computer video. And you know, the voice in which I said that almost makes it sound as though it's practically begging to have an incredibly cheesy. Let's um, let's see if I can actually um, do it in four eighty p. For right now, at least, your ears are safe from such indiscretions. Though obviously, future performance. Mention, you'll notice that the case on my pride is.
is actually somewhat ajar at the moment. There is a reason for this. If we look at the back, you'll see that I have been engaged in computer safe cracking 101. <laughs> there is a case lock back here, and it is very definitely in the locked position. But unlike the vast majority of these machines that I have seen over... It seems that 360 is the best. Time, the keys, which were once zip-tied to the case here, and in fact the zip-tie did follow me home, so I have no idea how I've managed to liberate it between then and now... The keys have, unfortunately, disappeared. It has dropped a couple of frames, but um, as long as you don't mess about with it and you, you know, put it at sensible resolution, you know, YouTubing is absolutely fine. As is the rest of this machine, really. You know, it's it's not a bad wee machine at all. You know, certainly now, not, now that it's got, you know, enough memory in it and what have you. I, I really think... Um, you know, I, re I really think this is quite a good, uh, I think this is really quite a good wee computer. Anyway, um, that concludes this video. I would like to thank you all for watching. And I'd like to thank the Head of Autism in Scotland for arranging um, for this computer to be sent to me. Uh, putting me in touch with uh, her friend who gave me the computer. I would also like to thank her friend who gave me the computer. Um, I really, really did, uh, I really do appreciate it. I, um, I think it is, uh, fantastic. And, um, I do have a couple of uses in mind for it, actually, believe it or not. So, um, thanks for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. The URL will follow. While you're there, why not watch some of my other videos if you've not already done so? And with that all said, I hope you will join me again for my next video. Thank you very much.